Roy Hall. He's a professor of virology at the Australian Infectious Diseases Research Center at the University of Queensland. Prof, thanks so much uh, for your time. Now, we've been getting new information about this virus from Chinese officials and how it seems to be changing. Officials saying that it's infectious during the incubation period. Just talk us through that. I mean, how dangerous is this now? Uh, it's still early days in the context of this viral disease. There's a lot of work that needs to be done to understand how it's actually transmitted. And the actual incubation times are only rough. So we know that some cases occur just a few days after exposure and some a couple of weeks. And exactly the transmission mechanism, until we know that, it's very difficult to understand how this thing will spread. Do you think the situation is likely to get worse? Actually, I'm very hopeful that the very early um, efforts that the Chinese have taken in controlling this, and particularly in limiting the travel of, of people out of the infected area of Wuhan and, and that province, uh, has probably reduced the spread to other countries a lot. So to date, we've only seen a handful of, of cases in countries outside of China. And all of these, to my knowledge, have been travellers that have been infected in China, in and around Wuhan and then have travelled. So we haven't seen any transmission outside of China, which is a really good sign. Uh, Prof, who is most susceptible to this virus? I mean, it is a cold and flu season in the Northern Hemisphere. So who's most likely to contract it? I don't think we know yet. It's still very early. Uh, there's been no reports on the, the demographics of what, which individuals are more susceptible. With many respiratory diseases like influenza, it's often the very young and the very old that are most susceptible, but, but certain uh, strains of these viruses can also affect healthy young people. I understand that uh, um, work is being done on a vaccine. Do you know what progress is being made on this? I think we're very fortunate to be in a time where the, the global health authorities have foreseen these new viruses emerging and have set up programs to develop vaccine technologies that can be quickly adapted to new viruses. And one of those projects is happening at my university, at the University of Queensland. And now they have the genetic sequence of the virus and they are using this t technology to really make a rapid vaccine effort. So hopefully they'll have a vaccine and know whether it works within about four or five months. Well, I mean, at the moment, we're seeing uh, some new infections uh, from around the world. We're hearing about them almost daily. We're just hearing now about another one in the United States in Orange County. We know that uh, that patient has been isolated. Um, the World Health Organization has been a little reluctant to declare this an emergency. Do you agree with their take on this? I think they're being, um, they're being very wise because declaring a global health emergency will use up a lot of resources. Um, they will be considering the case fatality rate, that is the number of people who get the disease who actually die, and that's sitting around about 2.5% currently. They'll also be looking at the spread of the virus, particularly the virus that's been transmitted in other countries. And until they get a good handle on that, I think they'll be watching this very carefully. As will we all. Uh, Professor Roy Hall, live to us there from Brisbane, Australia. Really appreciate your insight and your time. Thanks so much.